Hi everybody, this is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. Today we're talking about Yukon Gold potatoes and how to select, store, and preserve your potatoes if you want to store them for any length of time. First of all, when you're shopping for Yukon Gold potatoes, you want to avoid any ones that have wrinkles or soft spots or bruises on them. Those are not going to be the best ones to choose. They might be too old and not going to keep well for you or just not the best. You want to look for ones that just look clean and smooth that don't have any eyes on them like this. Okay? If you notice that there's a greenish tinge on there, they have been exposed to too much light and they have developed a toxin called solanine. Now, if there's just a little bit on there, it's okay. You can cut that off when you're preparing your potatoes. But if there's a lot of solanine on there, a lot of green tinge on there, avoid those and opt for ones that don't look green at all. Okay, that would be your best bet. Too much ingestion of solanine can uh, cause some intestinal upset and uh, actually large doses are just really not good for you. So you just want to avoid green potatoes if you can. When you get them home, you want to store them in a cool, dark, well ventilated place if you possibly can, especially if you want to keep them for any length of time, like beyond a week or so. Keep them away from heat sources and don't store them in the refrigerator. That is not the best place to store your potatoes, okay? Also, you don't want to store your potatoes near onions because the gases that are released by the onions will cause the potatoes to age faster than they normally would have. So you just want to store them away from other foods. And also, don't wash them until you're ready to use them, okay? That extra moisture that might linger on them might cause them to spoil, okay? So you don't want to do that. Now, to preserve your potatoes, other than storing them in a cool, dry, dark place, uh, you can freeze them or you could even dehydrate them as well. Now, to freeze them, you would want to wash them. You could peel them or leave the peel on. Either way it goes. Cut them into desired size pieces and then dunk them in some boiling water for three to five minutes. That, the length of time is going to depend upon the size of the potato pieces that you have. If you're cutting them up for hash browns, obviously, you're going to leave them in that boiling water for a lot less time than if you're leaving them in large chunks. Okay, so leave them in just until they barely are starting to cook and you've killed the enzymes that are in there. Remove them from that boiling water when the time is up and immediately put them in an ice water bath, a bowl of cold ice water and then leave them in the water until they're completely cold. And the rule of thumb is as long as you blanch them, that's how long you want to leave them in the cold water. Then take them out, drain them really well. You can put them in a freezer bag or freezer containers and leave a little head space in there and then uh, put them in the freezer. Or if you want to freeze them separately so you don't have this big clump, you could put them on a tray, parchment paper helps, and separate them well and put them in the freezer for a little while until they're frozen or at least frozen on the outside and then transfer them to a freezer container of your choice. Properly frozen Yukon Gold potatoes will keep up to a year in the freezer, but for absolutely best results, use them within a month of them being in there and you will not be sorry that you did that. When you go to use them, you don't need to worry about thawing them out completely. You can use them from the frozen state or partially frozen state. I would not thaw them out completely when you go to use them. That may invite them to turn on the mushy side. They might be a little harder to work with. So don't hesitate to use them frozen once they are in the freezer and ready to be used anytime you want. If you want to dehydrate them, you would still need to blanch them just like I said earlier, and then follow the instructions uh, that came with your dehydrator. So anyway, you've got some ways to preserve these Yukon Golds if you need to, and you've got more than what you can use at any one time. I do hope this helps. This is Judy at Judy in the Kitchen. 
Bye for now.